Good morning. First and foremost this morning, I want to welcome Lindsay Spletlick. Um, she's going to be leading us in worship today. Thank you and welcome. Um, you may have already met Lindsay in the fact that um, she and her wife, Beck, and their daughter, Jaden, have worshipped with us before and are worshipping with us today. Um, Lindsay is the relationship manager at CLAC Incorporated, LB, LGBTQ plus community center in Rock Island, where she excels in creating new relationships and connections between all the wonderful parts of our community and the wonderful services that CLAC Incorporated provides. As far as the um, announcements today, they're on the front of your bulletin, but just to highlight a couple, Santina will be back in the office on Wednesday. Um, if any help is needed, either contact me or Bridget, and we'll put you in contact with Pastor Heidi. Um, celebrating All Saints, All Remembrance Day, um, as before. Please note that in the bulletin. Um, adult confirmation class continues until November 8th. Um, if you're going to participate in that, please make sure that you let Santina know so she can get some of uh, the necessary materials to you. Blessing Box is always in need of donations. It's a wonderful mission of our church. Um, this week we need peanut butter, canned fruit, Pop-Tarts, toilet paper, tuna, bar soap. Um, diapers four, five, and six are welcome as well. From Kathy Hobbs, uh, Hobson, who can't be here today, she says she's sending you a reminder to be thinking and working on our Advent um, devotional, Generation to Generation. Um, if you have any entries, she'll be glad to talk to you about it. If you have any ideas, she'll be glad to talk to you about it. Um, and so she's hoping that you will think about that and participate in it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of Kathy Hobson. Are there any other announcements? Mary. Arp? Yes, um, there will be no this, this week? Okay, yeah, that's right. She gets back on Wednesday, and also there's no lectionary on Tuesday, no lectionary study on Tuesday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other announcements? Well, would all who are able please rise and join with me in the call to worship? We cry out to God for the help we need. How will we know we have been heard? God stands with us through life's trials and temptations. God sends visions of new possibilities. Here we stand watch for God's appearing. Together we seek a presence and aspire after truth. Surely God is in this place and will give us understanding. God is recalling us to the values we have neglected. God's righteousness is everlasting, and God's law is truth. Listen to all God will teach us. Hear the word of God. We seek faith and in love for one another. We would learn to do good and to work for justice. The opening hymn is number 70. God is 
is here as we are people, we to offer praise and prayer. May we find in fuller measure what it is in grace we share. Here is in the world around us all our varied skills and arts. Wait the coming of the Spirit into open minds and hearts. Give our symbols to remind us of our lifelong need of grace. Give our table fault and pulpit. Here the cross has central place. Here in honesty of preaching, even silence as in speech. Here in new and renewal, God the Spirit comes to each. Give our children a find a welcome in the shepherd's flock and fold. Here as bread and wine are taken, Christ sustains us as of old. Be the servants of the servant, seek in worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Sovereign God of earth and heaven, in an age change and doubt. Keep us faithful to the gospel. Help us work our purpose out. Here in this day's dedication, all we have to give, receive. We who cannot live with We take time to invite God into our hearts and into the space that we are gathered together. You can read with me. All around us, we see trouble and wrongdoing. Our world is consumed by violence and destruction. Even in the church, God, we strive in contention. We in created generation hangs heavy upon us. We cannot worship you apart from the turmoil that lies so close at hand. Listen to us, God, all people. Hear our longing for a new day in which you reign of love established among us. Amen. Taking the time to see ourselves and confess that sometimes we do take up the offer of being above someone else. Read along as we take the time to confess those sins. All-knowing God, we confess our participation in the hatred and evil that is consuming this planet. We gladly accept for ourselves the power and advantage that come our way. We seldom consider the cost to others of our prosperity. We tolerate poverty, hunger, and homelessness 
for people we do not know. We think our small efforts too insignificant to make a difference. Wash away our God that, even, that we may become rescuers of the oppressed and seekers after justice. Create in us the right spirit that prompts us to live by faith and to dare great things from you. Amen. We stay standing. Pardon? Do we stay standing? No, we don't have to. Okay, you may be seated. <laughs> there, there was no asterisk by it, so I, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> and the last thing we want to do is stay standing forever. <laughs> we are created in the image of God, and we are blessed with the capacity to reflect God's will in our daily lives. God cares for us and invests us with responsibility. Thus, God honors us with high expectations and confidence in our willingness to seek out life's best for all people. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are baptized and renewed. Let us offer one another the gift of peace. May God's peace be with you. Thank you for being here. God, we came to this place today to see each other, to gather with each other. We celebrate the good times. We talk with each other and we heal one another when we are in pain. We walk through this world every day seeing things that don't make sense. We wonder why some are not nice to each other or why are we so angry? We look to you, we listen to your word, We move forward every day looking at how can I be there? What can I do? We pray for anyone that is walking through pain at the moment. We celebrate the people that have walked through that pain and feel good. We pray for the nations around the world as they rise up in, you know, violence over being oppressed. We know that these nations that are under war are going to have to go through winter not knowing if they're going to have enough food or heat. Knowing that maybe their crops didn't get harvested because it was unsafe. We pray for the women in this country and all around the world. We'd never want anyone to be left behind. I 
I always pray and we pray for the LGBTQ plus community during a political season where they're constantly being highlighted as bad. I pray that we give each other the strength to stand up, fight against those harsh words. Tell that friend that thinks by saying an opinion jokingly that it's okay and it's not okay. I pray for Hope UCC to continue to do all the good works and keep the ministries going and holding each other up whenever times get tough. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. With the assurance Jesus offers, together we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the debts as we forgive your debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Forgive us the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. The Hebrew scripture lesson for today comes from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. You have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you may make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove your evil deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. If your sins are like scarlet, will they become like snow? If they are red like crimson, will they become like wool? The gospel lesson today comes from Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Would all who are able please rise and hear the word that the gospel is telling us. He entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there named Zacharias. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He is gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner? And Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, Half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too 
is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is how pulpit supply goes. <laughs> exactly. And we'll see if we get that back on there. Maybe. There we go. Nope. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. All right. I'll let you. <laughs> There we go. Shouldn't be that hard. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. How's that? This is what, is that's that perfect. That's perfect. Thank you. That's what ministry is about, right? I, is... I, know, I learned music. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. And um, it's been such a warm welcome. You guys have everybody walking in and, you know, just having that wonderful smile, that warm smile that just kind of it warms your heart. And I don't know, with the raise of hands, how many of you guys ever written a sermon? <laughs> no, I don't write them either. So um, <laughs> I, you know, when I read this uh, text, you know, you, you read text and you read text and you read text and no matter, it depends on where you're at in your life journey, how you hear the text. And this is one of those that a lot of times I like to focus on Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus, you know, <laughs> there's a very detailed description of the guy, right? He's the tax collector and we've been hearing a lot about the tax collectors and You'd think it was tax season or something. Um, but he's short in statue. I'm not very tall myself. Um, but what I think is kind of amazing with Zacchaeus is that he really worked hard to see Jesus. And I always thought, you know, okay, he worked hard, but until I moved into the house that we're in now, um, I never really knew what a sycamore tree was. Like, I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't have any, like, I just read it in the text. But the house across from us have three huge sycamore trees. Now I know not all sycamore trees are created equal. Um, but these trees, I mean, are just so tall. And their trunks are... I mean, it's just one solid trunk that goes way up. And then they have these massive leaves that fall from them that go into our yard. <sighs> That's a, another sermon. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, as I've been thinking about this text all week, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, That's a big tree. So he really had to work hard to get to a point where he knew that he was going to see Jesus. And then I kind of think, too, like, what have we done in our lives to work that hard? I mean, we worked probably hard to get where we are in our careers or to finish that career and move on to, you know, the new chapter. Or, But have we worked that hard to see one person? And hoping, really, I mean... He knew that he was going to go that way, but I don't know. Many of us, we, get in, we think we're going that way, and then we get on a side conversation, right? And I'm sure Jesus had a lot of side conversations. But he got up into that tree so that he could see Jesus. But what Jesus does is the thing that we hear in almost 
I would say, what, 75% of the stories of Jesus? He then calls Zechariah by name. Calls Zechariah by name. He didn't know who this person was, really, in the tree, but he called Zechariah by name. And I think that's a really important piece for us to remember because being called by name, that really warms our heart. That puts joy in us. That puts a value in us, a, a purpose, when we're called by name. And I know that sometimes when you know your name... <laughs> Sometimes, you know, as a mom, you hear mom, and then you're like, oh, what? <laughs> or, you know, it, or you're the person that has to make a lot of decisions. Or, you know, sometimes it, that your name can kind of be, oh, I don't want to hear it again. Or um, maybe you don't like your name. That could be another thing, too. <laughs> but Zacharias was called by name. I wish I could relate to Zachariah, or Zacchaeus, sorry, Zacchaeus. I wish I could relate to Zacchaeus a lot more, because there's more salvation in there. There's more grace in there, in that story. But for some reason, well, I'm human, so. I tend to be the people that grumbled we're displeased. Why? Why would you choose him? And I think that's why sometimes when reading texts, we love to hang on to all the grace and the salvation and the hope and the, you know, the love, the being called by name. But sometimes it's really hard for us to recognize ourselves as the group that really didn't like that decision. You know, if I was the one making Jesus' Jesus's, you know, agenda for the day, I would make sure that it was all the high priests, the people that did everything that they needed to do to, you know, get to heaven, to do all the, you know, to be recognized. But... That's not what Jesus did. And the one thing is, is, I mean, I bet you everybody has had that experience in your life where you did the grumbling, you did the upset piece, you didn't feel like they were acting all that good, but they're the ones that got chosen. This is a little bit of a story that I, a lot of my youth that I've served. So I'm sitting in the McDonald's parking lot, or driveway, and I'm, you know, in their drive through and everything. This car ahead of me is rusted, it's old, it's all these things, and whoever's in the, that seat is playing their music to where everything rattles, and then my car rattles, right? And I've got this, all I want is whatever I was getting, right? A hamburger or whatever, probably a fish sandwich. <laughs> and I had all these things in my head. Oh my gosh. You know, why do they have to play that music? And then the car is so old, and now I have to hear it. Why are they making me hear their music? Da, 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 you know, going through my head. But it's also pouring down rain. Just pouring. So they get their food, I get my food. Now I'm behind <clears throat> them at the stoplight. Still the music, still the, you know, and it's, I mean, it is pouring. 
All of a sudden, I see a guy walking in the pouring rain. The guy in front of me in this car puts his arm out the window and hands this guy an umbrella. That was a moment that I went, okay, I hear you. But I was part of the group that grumbled. And I didn't like that. I just didn't like that. And I think we get into the grumbling piece of it because we compare ourselves, right? We're constantly comparing ourselves to the next person. Um, like, I mean, how often, especially women, we go and we have to buy clothes and we have to buy clothes because that's what we have to do, right? But we go and buy clothes and we compare ourselves against somebody we might not even personally know them, but if we compare them against somebody, like, I don't look as good, I don't, you know, oh, this is not right, and, oh, I'm just too short, I'm too tall, I'm too wide, I'm too thin, I'm too, I mean, all the things. We compare ourselves when it comes to careers. I'm not as good as this person. I'm not as good as this person. And I think that's what kind of starts putting us into that group that kind of grumbles. But then we start grumbling too long and then we don't recognize the salvation and the grace that God gives us. And then you think about the Hebrew, te- or um, sorry, it was Isaiah this morning. You t- think about that text, and it's all about enough is enough. All of your sacrifices, everything. It doesn't matter to me. You know? It's like enough is enough. Stop. Stop comparing yourself. Stop the grumbling. Stop trying to be better than the next person. That doesn't, that doesn't give you your relationship with God. None of that does. Your relationship with God is your communication, your prayer, the grace you give someone, the sharing of salvation. I don't think we teach that enough. Our grace that we can give, I mean, our grace from God is an undeserved gift. I mean, believe, if we sat there and we reflected on all the things that we've done in our life, I'm not sure if my mother would give me grace. <laughs> but God gives us grace because God knows that we are learning every day. We are experiencing every day. We love every day. And our relationship with God, when we come to the table and have communion, it's our moment. It's our moment. That individual piece where we're being called by name. And God, thank you. But thank you for giving me the grace that I can give to another person. 
So when we hear the story about Zacchaeus, I encourage you to be the person that steps outside of that crowd and sees God in that moment and not everybody else in their words, in their opinions. And give the grace that God gives us. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Lindsay. Well, I wasn't expected to be here until a couple of weeks from now, but we moved this up, and so a little bit of apprehension today, but we'll see. A few weeks ago on a Sunday morning, Kathy LeMaster came to me in the back as we were getting ready in our AV club and began to ask me a question about would I and my, before she almost finished, I said no. And I thought, let me ha let her finish. And she was asking me if I would do the mission or the stewardship moment. And my first reaction, no, is because I felt woefully inadequate compared to many of you who have spoken about such things. But that same Sunday evening and night, I could not sleep. Seventy years of experiences in church kept going over and over, sometimes chronologically, other times just random thoughts. So finally at two o'clock in the morning, got my phone and I text, sent a text to Kathy saying, okay, if you still need someone, I'll do this. And she texted me back. She was awake. <laughs> now, when you see her, she has a side story to that, that two o'clock my text was important to her for a whole other reason. So it's, it's interesting how those coincided. After I sent the text, I turned on the light and got out my notebook and a pen and wrote furiously for one hour, trying to capture all of those thoughts that had been running through my mind as I was trying to sleep. And I began to see things dimensionally. I don't know why. We'll see in the, as we go along. My first church memories, I was 10 and a half years old here in Moline. 
was walking up the steps to the Christian Scientist Church on 16th Street in Moline. It was a big, to me, it was big and imposing because it's architecturally was different than some of the other uh, buildings around. My memories from that short time that we attended there were two things, two hymns, Holy, 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 and Onward Christian Soldiers. And I'm still moved when I hear them, though we hear them not very often anymore. My family history in the church is my father was raised in the Catholic Church, faithful altar boy, destined to priesthood in his father's eyes. My mother was raised in a household where her father was a faithful Christian scientist. My grandmother, I never heard her mention much uh, in that realm. But for years, my grandmother was a church secretary at the Riverside Church in New York City, rather imposing interdenominational church overlooking the Hudson River. And when they moved to Moline, she was then the church secretary for many years down at First Congregational Church. By the age of 11, the family was attending the First Congregational Church. I was overwhelmed again by its size, its vastness, five choirs, all beginning with a C, and Mary could probably help me remember each one of those, a large organ, and many, many people. My memories for those years were the pilgrims at Thanksgiving, always in costume, often my father at the door greeting. Christmas Eve service, candles, the chancel choir, walking around the, the perimeter of the sanctuary with candles singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and the incredible voice of Ralph D. Derouze. Thank you, I could not remember. I remember Sunday school, confirmation, and being part of the youth group. But both of those childhood memories were rather one-dimensional because I was attending because my family did. I was married young, still as a teen, but my husband and I continued to attend First Congregational Church. We were part of Sunday school, couples group, and our children were baptized there. So I kind of saw that as a two-dimensional experience because we were making the choice to be there. Excuse me. We were involved but not immersed in it. From 1963 to 2018, 55 years, I was kind of in a church wilderness. Many, many, many moves. Many houses, cities, states, and countries. Many, many job changes and changes in marital status. So it was a sporadic attendance at church. I was always seeking the whole package, the right pastor, perfect sermons, welcoming congregation. I experienced various denominations, various languages, cultural norms, rituals, building styles, styles of worship, styles of dress. I experienced disillusionment as well. Two examples. One, for a while, in many, many moves, I lived in a Christian uh, camp up in the mountains above Denver. My husband was a maintenance man for a period of time. That was one of the coolest and pettiest experiences because there wasn't very much Christianity shown by the staff or those who were coming. And it was sad, it was a missed opportunity. Three years as a house parent at a, at a Presbyterian Christian, at a Presbyterian children's home in South Carolina, my husband and I were house parents. There were about 120 plus house parents and children on campus, eager, needy for pastoring. Yet there was little. The pastor did not tend his flocks, and it was such a missed opportunity. Um, there's just a lot behind that, but it was disappointing to many of us. Most of those experiences during these years were, again, two-dimensional, modest involvement or commitment, and not that important much of the time. But two experiences stand out over those years as kind of a three-dimensional, deeper, a little bit beyond the norm. I don't have any memory of what church or what city this took place, 
But while sitting in the pews over many weeks, I was feeling a force around me, kind of around my shoulders. It was, it was inexplicable, really. And it brought me to tears week after week. I often wondered, was I being called? I know not beyond that, but I just remember that. And during three years of being a volunteer at a Christian charity in Torre Vieja, Spain, it was called Reach Out, Extendo Mano. Every morning, we had a blessing circle before opening. We had a resale shop and we had a, uh, a kitchen where we served breakfast. Side by side, holding hands, volunteers, homeless, those less fortunate, some more fortunate. Prayers were offered in many tongues, many languages. I remember in 2014, Helena, a woman from Ukraine who did all the cleaning around there on the floors and cleaned up people's messes and everything. She was offering prayers for her family in Crimea. And it struck me so that she would still be offering prayers for Ukraine. Usually there were many tears shed during those early moments. I'm gonna be like Santina in a moment here. In 2018, I took a risk and a leap of faith. I moved back to Moline after 55 years away. This was my 49th move in my life. It was on a Tuesday. I arrived with four suitcases, my dog, 17 boxes of all my worldly goods had arrived a week before. On that first Monday, I went to High V down on 7th Street to meet with my school friends, class of 59. You have all heard of us. There's three more of us sitting in the congregation today. I hadn't seen them in seven years since I'd been here for my mother's passing. And it was so welcoming. And I just knew that that was one of the, because one of the fellows asked me one day, why did you move back here? I said, just look around. Just look around. Even though we had graduated 58, 59 years before, we were still a group. On that day, one of the couples that I had known not only through school but through First Congregational Church invited me to attend First Congo with them the next Sunday. So I did. They picked me up. We went down. It was familiar because I'd been there over the years with my parents as I came home to visit. But in some ways it wasn't because there were obvious changes. And even though I was friends, and even though I recognized a lot of faces and people, I kind of felt lonesome. I didn't feel the warm fuzzies, if you will. Is it okay to say that about church, about warm fuzzies? One Sunday, several weeks later, we, some of us, Dorothy included, were cleaning Moline with the past mayor of Moline. On a Sunday afternoon, we'd gather and we'd choose a different place. And this time we were down under one of the bridges in downtown Moline. The friend that was with us was the same one I'd gone to First Congo with, had some early stages of Alzheimer's, and she repeatedly would ask questions. And one of the questions was, what church do you go to? So I'd answer in whatever way I could, and then Dorothy would answer, and Dorothy said she went to Hope UCC. And they had a new pastor, Santina, and she was wonderful. Why don't you give it a try sometimes? Dorothy invited me. So I did. I came alone on a Sunday. Walked in the door alone, but wasn't alone after that. There were introductions, connections. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Some people knew my mother, my father, my brother. I thought, I am going to have to be on my best behavior. <laughs> so now here I am. Four years later, four years of a four-dimensional experience, rich in openness, caring, inclusion, humor, respect, learning, growth, love, outreach, opportunity, and yes, tears. No more going through the motions as in the past. This is an ongoing journey, a completeness, fourfold, four-dimensional, as Santina frequently says, to look at the cross in the directions that it goes. I thank you all and Santina and Bob in Salt Lake City for being who you are so I can be who I am. We are an amalgam, a blend of the traditional and the modern. 
we are bound together in our faith, experiencing Hope UCC's core values, spiritual growth and transformation, serving and reaching out with love, and authoring an authentic welcome. I believe not because my parents told me to. I believe not because the church told me to. I believe because I've experienced his mercy, goodness, and blessings myself here at UCC. Thank you. At Hope UCC. Lo siento. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Jesus Christ came into the world to seek out and to save the lost. Sometimes those who have much are lost in their possessions. The offering becomes the high point of worship when we are centered on the steadfast love of God. Then our possessions become instruments of grace for us and for others, and the lost are found. Hope UCC thanks you for the gifts you share with this congregation. Your offering enables us to live into our mission. Would you please join with me in the unison prayer of dedication? Seeking God, all that we have is yours. All your children are our brothers and sisters. We are all inheritors of your grace. You have blessed us abundantly. Now bless us, move to share, that our love for one another may increase. Amen. It is easy for us to come into worship, hear the good words, however we are asked to take that and go home go into your community, go into your friend groups and your family and share those good words. So hurry home. You have a guest who's waiting for you. Jesus Christ wants to stay at your house today. Greet the challenges of this week as opportunities. Let your faith grow as your love for others increases. We will pray for one another as we serve. We will look to God for the strength we need. God will fulfill your good resolves and work of your faith. The name of Jesus Christ will be glorified in you. Amen.